Apostles Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Jose and Vanille de Reis from West St. Paul, Manitoba. This Mass is offered in honor of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary, for grace is received for a special intention for the souls of deceased parents and brother, for all the souls in purgatory, and for blessings among children and grandchildren of the deceased. By choosing to remember the deceased members of your family in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada, and on their behalf, I thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have taught us to chasten our bodies for the healing of our souls, enable us, we pray, to abstain from all sins and strengthen our hearts to carry out your loving commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. I, Daniel, turned to the Lord God to seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, Ah, Lord, great and awesome God, keep covenant and steadfast love with those who love you and keep your commandments. We have sinned and done wrong, acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes and our ancestors and to all the people of the land. Righteousness is on your side, O Lord, but open shame as at this day falls on us, the people of Judea, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away in all the lands to which you have driven them because of the treachery that they have committed against you. Open shame, O Lord, falls on us, our kings, our officials, and our ancestors, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws, which he set before us, by his servants, the prophets. The word of the Lord. Do not. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. In Rome, in the Church of St. Louis of France, there's a very famous painting by the artist Caravaggio of the calling of St. Matthew. On one side, to the right of the painting, you see the hand of Jesus reaching out. It's actually this finger pointing like this, just like the Sistine Chapel ceiling where you have the finger of God, the finger of Adam kind of connecting. So Jesus is going like that. And at a table to the left side of the painting, you see a whole bunch of people together. And it's not quite clear which one of them is Matthew. It might be the young man at the end, but most people think it's this older man in the middle who is going something like, Who, me? I'm being called? And indeed, if that is the figure who is to be St. Matthew being called, as Jesus says, you, come follow me, he had reason to wonder, who, me? Because, of course, Matthew was a tax collector. He was a, a person who spent his time really being very unfair to his own people. He had reason to wonder, how would I get to be called? I remember it's uh, the bishop, when I was ordained a bishop, uh, the bishop who preached the homily said that whenever he goes uh, to visit a school, the children ask, how do you become a bishop? How did you become a bishop? The parents ask more wisely, how did you become a bishop? (laughs) So that's the spirit of Matthew. Who, me? And yet, he is called. The finger of Christ points to him. And it is in that that he experiences the great mercy and forgiveness for his many sins. The great English spiritual writer, the Venerable Bede, commenting on that has a phrase, it is in the experience of mercy that we are chosen. And it's in the experience of chosen as well that we experience mercy. And that phrase is what Pope Francis has chosen as his motto as a bishop. We all wonder, who am I? to receive such a blessing. And yet we receive the mercy of God, each one of us very frail, just like Matthew. And so we need to reflect upon that, especially during Lent, the theme of mercy. In the first reading today, Daniel asks mercy of God for the sins of the people. 
And we know God is always merciful to us as Jesus was merciful to St. Matthew. But here in the passage from the Gospel today, from the Gospel of St. Luke, which is in many ways the Gospel of mercy. You know, Mark shows the strength of the Lord, and Matthew the teaching, and John the majesty. But in St. Luke's Gospel, we see the mercy, the gentleness of the Lord. And the Lord, we hear, says, Be merciful as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. All of us are like Matthew in the painting. We all have reason to say, who am I to be chosen by the Lord? And yet each one of us is. And if he has been so merciful to us, rich in kindness, abundant in mercy, slow to anger, who are we then to be harsh and judging towards other people? As we have received mercy, we should show it to others because we are all very frail. And that's a good thought to have on this Lenten day to reflect upon the mercy and love we receive from the Lord and to be kind and understanding and compassionate because all of us have got faults, but we need to look towards our own and ask God's mercy rather than mercilessly looking at the faults of other people. Now let us offer our prayers to Almighty God. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the church throughout the world, especially for all those Christians, those many, many, many Christians who are being martyred and persecuted. We pray for the, we ask the intercession of the 21 Coptic martyrs of Libya, and we pray for all of those who have been kidnapped and tortured and are facing death for their faith. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray that during this holy season of Lent, we may all draw closer to the Lord, turn away from our sins, and ask the mercy of God through the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray for our own country that justice may be found here. And the people will be free, whether they be politicians or physicians or others, any one of us, will be free to live according to their conscience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for all of those who are sick, who are suffering in any way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And for all of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers which we offer to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we be pleased to form the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to receive us and accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Lord Jesus Christ. pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in your goodness these our prayers, O Lord, and set free from worldly attractions those you allow to serve the heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it to themselves, for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of the peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in the spiritual reflection of Father Pedro Arupe. More than ever, I find myself in the hands of God. This is what I've wanted all my life, from my youth. But now, there is a difference. The initiative is entirely with God. It is indeed a profound spiritual experience to know and feel myself so totally in God's hands. Let us pray. May this communion, O Lord, cleanse us of wrongdoing and make us heirs to the joy of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you and remain with you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1 888 383 6277 for details.